What a marvelous thing great physical beauty is. It's nothing less than a living miracle. It's not the result of achievement, skill, patience, or endeavor. It's just a divine happening. And yet, over this divine happening, over this miracle, fashion is triumphant. After a time, we begin to tire of a certain Venus. We take her beauty, beauty for granted. We begin to know all about her, and a new Venus must appear on the scene. Um, I do kill this. I mean, I did it. What a marvelous thing great physical beauty is. It's nothing less than a living miracle. It's not the result of achievement, skill, patience, endeavor. It's just a divine happening. And yet, over this divine happening, over this miracle, fashion is triumphant. After a while, we begin to tire of such and such a Venus. We begin to know her beauty too well. We take it for granted. And a new beauty comes upon the scene, and she's the all-important one of the moment. She's the one to whom we offer our floral tributes. Already we are tired of the Helens of Troy, who are so gaunt and statuesque and we are tired of the chubby little Nell Gwynns and the robust uh, Gibson girl and also the Ziegfeld girl. But the modern Venus, she has a straight figure and she's not unlike a messenger boy. Nowadays, comeliness and homeliness is dowdy and stale. We like to see bones and form. The modern Venus doesn't boast of calves that are very shapely. Her legs are like arrows, and her hands are long and bony. For beautiful heads and for necks. The new Venus doesn't boast of shapely calves. Her legs are like arrows, and her hands are long and thin. The beautiful, for beautiful hands and for necks and heads, England boasts of the prize winners. There are many who, for their alabaster complexions, their cheeks like ice creams, and their cherry lips, their pansy eyes with the feathery lashes, these, for these qualities, should be called immortal beauties. But the English fail badly about the legs and the feet. And here the New Yorkers win. For their wrists and their ankles and their legs and their movement, they're perfect and they're essential in 1929. And whereas the former beauties lolled about and were indolent and impotent, the modern Venus, besides being extraordinarily decorative and amusing to paint and draw and photograph, is Although she looks perhaps in comparison a little anemic and almost scrawny, she's very alert and energetic and intelligent, and she's the first Venus to possess that estimable quality known as guts. The new Venus does not boast of shapely calves, her legs are like arrows. Her hands are long and thin and bony. For beautiful necks and heads, England possesses the prize winners. There are many whose beauty should be immortal for their alabaster complexions, their cheeks like pink ice creams, the cherry lips, pansy eyes with feathery lashes, but the English fail badly about the feet and legs. And here the New Yorkers win. For their wrists, their ankles, their legs, their movements, they are perfect and essential in 1929.
Their figures, their legs, their arms, their movements are perfect and essentially 1929. And whereas the beauties of yesterday lolled about and were pampered and impotent and indolent, the new Venus, besides being extraordinarily decorative and amusing to paint and draw and photograph, is, although perhaps in comparison she looks a little anemic and scrawny, she's marvelously energetic and alert and intelligent, and above all, the 1929 Venus is the first of her type to possess that estimable quality known as guts.